And I'm Michael Jones with Variety, with the team behind In Prison My Entire Life. My whole life? My entire life. My whole life. Whole life. Because um, it's not the entire life, is it? Uh, it's my whole life. Ta uh, can you give some background about the um, sure. Mumia Abu Jamal story? So far. So um, basically, Mumi Abu Jamal uh, was arrested for the murder of a police officer, Daniel Faulkner, um, and it happened on the day I was born, within you know a few minutes. Um, and I sort of became aware of Mumia through my mother, who's very politically active and into social justice issues, and then increasingly through bands like Rage Against Machine and the Beastie Boys, Bad Religion in the 90s. Um, and I, I think I just became fascinated with the idea that this guy had been sort of away for my entire life and the fact that he'd been in this tiny little cell um, and somehow I'd found out about him and been able to hear his voice and read his writings and I think that was the initial point of, of contact and, and the point of reference for the film. Colin, how did this land in your life? <clears throat> well, um, I'd never heard of the case. Um, what intrigued me was that uh, the, the improbability of this relationship between this half English, half American boy born in England, white boy, middle class, um, with this extraordinarily uh, strange connection with uh, a, a black man from America 3,000 miles away sitting in a prison cell through the entire time that William had been alive. And I thought there was a, there was a, a story to be told in that relationship. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about your involvement with film? Yeah, uh, my involvement was basically, um, I directed the movie and I suppose, mm -hmm. two things really. One, I really wanted it to be Will's film and reflect his uh, generation's point of view, I suppose, and the fact that, you know, it's quite an intriguing uh, commencement to this relationship, which it became a relationship. Um, Willem and we had talked many times, but, you know, that to discover somebody's voice on the web, mm -hmm. you know, you can travel so much, so far on the web, and I know that uh, maybe the difference between my generation and Will's generation is that the web is kind of where people do their traveling to a certain mm -hmm. extent now, right? Uh, and not go anywhere, really, physically. Uh, and yet this voice is discoverable on the web and, and got under your skin and, and was something that kind of just, with the passage of time, the passage of 25 years, motivated Will to, to want to get up from the chair, from in front of the computer and out into the real world mm -hmm. to, to meet him. It seems to be also about moving to two different places. You begin in England, obviously, and then you end up in Philadelphia. You know, I've spent a lot of time in Philadelphia, and anybody who, who spends time in Philadelphia, you can't be um, not colored by Mumia and that and you can't be actually colored by the sense of violence in Philadelphia. It's one of the most violent cities, you know, in America. Um, and it has such a deep history, particularly with the move bombing. Yeah, know, absolutely. And, uh, um, so uh, can you talk a little bit about that, about how moving from England to Philadelphia, kind of the shock of the, I don't know how much Philadelphia is a part of your movie. It is very much, it's a, it's a, it's very much a starting point and a place that you have to go, as you say. And in a way, uh, uh, without sounding sort of trite about it, in a way, the un unresolved nature of, of the Mumia case, if you like, the Mumia matter, seems to be, um, as you say, there in Philadelphia. You know, there's, there's unresolved tensions. And, and he seems to epitomize that. And the thing that shocked me, I, I don't know what I was expecting, uh, but America is so full of surprises that you get to Philadelphia and you expect it to be this massive, you know, civic center. And actually, you know, what really struck me was that right in the middle of town is that, is that council chamber and the arguments are still going on in the council mm -hmm. chamber. In a way, there's the descendants of, the, of, of people from the original argument. There's sons of mayors as councillors, there's, you know, the, say, the, 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 the movement that's with supporting Mumia, and, and there's this ongoing um, fight in the local, it's a local fight, mm -hmm. and, and that is extremely interesting. This is one of the very racially divided city as well, you know, so mm. that must have been something that, not new, but different for you, right? Well, it's quite, I mean, I think, you know, I mean, uh, Philadelphia has a certain history, mm. and I think that you know, coming from the school that I'd grown up in, in, in London, you know, English was the third language spoken. You know, it was like the most multicultural sort of area, you know, growing up. And then I moved to New York when I was 12 to an all-white suburb in Long Island. So, you know, for me, uh, you know, and I, I guess for most people, you know, race has a, has a long history in America. And, and specifically, you know, in Philadelphia, going around some of the, you know, some of the rundown areas of Philly now, look like parts of, you know, Soweto, you know, it's like, it's yeah. unbelievable to see that, that, you know, in this day and age, you still have such rundown communities and people still trying to fight through um, and, and, <clears throat> and change, you know, sort of their livelihoods and, and still coming up against a constant struggle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a reason why David Lynch said Philadelphia is the most bizarre city he's ever been in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who said that? David Lynch. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you uh, are you keeping in touch with Mumia about 
uh, the movie and the progress and yeah we are we, we're sort of sending him letters um, you know I think it's a very you know you've got to be very respectful when you make this type of film mm -hmm. because you know if some you know he could be very very easily exploited mm -hmm. you know considering he's in you know he's in his sort of cell and you could do anything you wanted you could make a film that's completely anti movie and, and completely you know go around him but I think you know he also at the same time is you know he kind of can't grasp what's sort of going on he's in his little cell and uh, and I think it's probably quite painful for him to think of all this stuff going on and you know if he connects to it it's kind of too too much for him sure. so you know we sort of send him letters and you know speak to his lawyer and say this is what's going on but in a weird way I think he's kind of not interested I think as he kind of has his daily struggle his daily routine of you know push-ups and a bit of reading and this and that and I think thinking of all this outside of that would probably be a bit too much to grasp I would imagine. Wilson thank you all for coming by. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you.